the sediments associated with glaciers have uh, some very specific characteristics or faces. So sometimes uh, you can see diff specific types of landforms. All right, so we mentioned, for example, the pavements that are ground flat uh, by the glaciers. Often the glaciers create U-shaped valleys. Uh, because they, they erode across a very large uh, width of the uh, valley. Um, they often leave striations on the pavements and other aspects of the um, of other places in the bedrocks. And then there are, there are a host of other uh, f uh, features that have a, a ton of different names. And many of those are um, in the um, the form that the diamagtite um, uh, is left behind. So, uh, for example, moraines, um, as an example. Okay. Uh, for our facies, we're actually going to talk mostly about the sediments and the rocks that are actually deposited from them. And so uh, we're going to uh, talk about the grains and, and how they're arranged. So we have the, the grain composition. And because physical weathering is more abundant than chemical weathering, uh, it's basically the same as the bedrock that's eroded from the glacier. So for example, if the uh, glaciers are eroding granites, uh, most of the grains will have a, a, a granite composition. If it's eroding carbonates, most of the grains will have a carbonate uh, composition. Okay. We also have the grain size. And glacial deposits have some of the widest grain sizes of, of any uh, produced in environments. So that grinding process that creates the uh, pavements creates uh, clay-sized grains uh, of lithic class because they have the same composition. So we often call that rock flour. And it'll go all the way up to uh, boulders. And the ice can transport any of those. And so when the ice melts, those are all left behind. So if they're all combined uh, together uh, from the ice, we end up with the diamictite. Which is unsorted with a mix of, of, um, of grain sizes. And we also have uh, things like um, lone stones. that might drop from icebergs uh, into uh, mudstones. So these, these are two uh, types of rock that are not uh, uniquely glacial, but are very common in glacial facies. They're things to look for. There are also some characteristics of uh, the grains uh, that are uh, common in glacial deposits and not anywhere else. So they have unique characteristics. And those come from this grinding process again, and in particular, uh, the faceted clasts. And especially if they have striations on them. Right. So the only way we typically form a uh, class with, the, with one surface that's ground down is by the transport of ice over the, um, 
uh, over the bedrock and the grinding of those, those clasps against each other. And then we have, often we can uh, define associated bases. which are environments that are next to these glacial environments and ones where um, the, some of the sediment is reworked. And these would be, for example, braided streams or river deposits, uh, lake deposits, and some uh, marine deposits or ocean deposits. And in the lake and uh, marine deposits, you often see these lone stones, and uh, turbidites are all often common due to the rapid deposition of sediment from the melting of the glacial ice. Thanks for watching.